Let's talk about frontal sinus trephination. This is a targeted procedure designed to access difficult to reach areas within the frontal sinus. Why do we need it? Well, sometimes traditional endoscopic techniques fall short, especially when there's scarring, prior surgeries, ossification, or severe infection. Trephination gives us a direct route to these challenging regions. Here's how it works. We start by prepping the forehead and injecting the medial brow with a solution of 1% lidocaine with epinephrine. This reduces bleeding and provides local anesthesia. The incision, small about 0.5 to 1 centimeter, is made near the inframedial brow, typically 1 to 1.5 centimeters from the midline. For a better cosmetic outcome, we bevel the blade parallel to hair follicles, minimizing the risk of eyebrow alopecia. Careful dissection exposes the frontal bone while avoiding the supratrochlear and supraorbital neurovascular bundles. Now, choosing the trepanation site is key. Although there's no formal standard, it's generally placed near the sinus floor, about 1 to 1.5 centimeters from the midline. Why there? It balances access and safety, as studies show an increased risk of cross trepanation closer to the midline. Once we've identified the site, we use a 4 mm burr to penetrate the anterior table of the frontal sinus. This creates a small opening for inserting endoscopes and instruments. From here, we can assess drainage pathways, remove obstructions, and even irrigate if the anatomy is distorted. One major advantage of this technique is how well it combines with endoscopic sinus surgery. Together, these approaches often eliminate the need for more invasive procedures. Patients tend to recover better since we preserve natural frontal drainage pathways and reduce postoperative complications. What about risks? Scarring is the most common concern. To minimize this, we keep the trephine opening under 0.5 centimeters. Rare complications include wound infections, facial cellulitis, and in very rare cases, cerebrospinal fluid leakage or orbital injuries. Let's consider a case example. A 24-year-old male presented with severe frontal sinus symptoms. Imaging revealed a blockage caused by neoosteogenic bone formation. Traditional endoscopic approaches were insufficient. Here, frontal sinus trephination provided critical access for treating the condition successfully. In summary, frontal sinus trephination is a vital tool in managing complex sinus cases. It complements endoscopic approaches by offering direct access to previously unreachable areas, ensuring better outcomes for patients. With proper planning and technique, it's a reliable and effective option in advanced sinus surgery.